Hey guys, welcome to Top Channel One on One. So today I wanted to let you know that I've made an update to the Houdini for Blender Artists course. I've just updated it with a new section about RBDs, and now this is what we're going to be making in that section. It goes through step by steps. Uh, but I wanted to show you a quick overview for anyone who is not taking the course but still interested in how you could do something like this. Uh, this time we are rendering with Kama which is Houdini's render engine. It's quite easy to set up, but uh, it could be confusing when you are just new at Houdini. So let me just show you how I easily set up uh, these glass spheres, globes uh, to, to fracture. I also show how you can make a procedure table here, but uh, let's just jump in into the setup to see how uh, this is all set up. The process is very, very easy. I start with a sphere uh, like this. Uh, that I fracture using the, the boolean fracture. I uh, fracture it into several pieces. Let me just show them by uh, visualizing the names. Uh, you can see how many those are. It's entirely procedural, so I can come in here. So the boolean cutter requires the input geometry, which is the object you want to cut, and then the cutters. Basically, like how you would do it in Blender. So these are my cutters. Uh, they're just a grid uh, that are displaced with a uh, mountain node i wanted several of them so i use a point generate to generate a few particles about 10 and then jitter those so that they are all in random positions and uh, uh, then i instanced the grid on them basically what you would do with the instance on points in blender this node here is just for for the orientation if you know how to use geometry nodes you're going to find houdini quite easy to use and uh, in fact if you want to practice it now you can get a free version of Houdini that does everything the commercial version does except for exporting. I think the render resolution is also limited to a 720 uh, but uh, everything else you get everything uh, you can follow the course along and um, maybe when you decide whether to, to to switch to the Houdini Blender workflow you can buy the license. Like I said this is fully procedural so I can go in and increase the point count to say 20 and you can see this will update if i use one i'll get one piece if i use five i get five pieces uh, this is what i was missing in blender that's why i was forced to try houdini it doesn't really have the procedure workflow uh, that you get with houdini and uh, you can even look at the exploded view here of uh, the different pieces yeah then i set up the rbd which is basically telling houdini that I want each of these pieces to be affected by the rigid body system and in fact if i use the rbd solver i can just plug in so this is the mesh i want i can plug it in here and uh, maybe i want to move this up a bit fast so i will just use a transform node uh, before i add this so i'm just going to move all of these up so when i run a simulation on them uh, let me first make sure that i have a ground Round like that and uh, yeah you can see everything breaks up uh, but uh, the extra nodes are just to set up some properties so this is the rbd config is very very useful when you're trying to set up things like uh, a density uh, collision margins it, whether the piece is activated or not uh, so it, it does a lot of things here and i explain some of them in this in the section then we have constraints if i don't want the entire piece to break and i can even test that out using the rbd bullet solver again so rbd bullet solver after adding the constraints just to make sure that they are working uh, correctly uh, connect the constraints connect the proxy and uh, let me bring back my transform let me use the rbd transform instead rbd transform here uh, to push these again above and uh, let me also just include the table since we have it already that so this is my table i'm just going to duplicate it add it as a collider so now if i have this fall you can see how everything breaks apart now let me first turn off the rbd config just so we can see the different pieces that make up uh, this and how they are not breaking because of the constraints we added you can see that yeah you can see how that is somewhere staying intact instead of if i disable this constraint where they would just break everything would just fall apart just like that all the pieces break apart without the constraints so i show that and uh, i wanted to emit 
these particles constantly. So I created a setup using a grid just like that, scattered some points. Functionality like this could be replicated in Blender using the simulation zone. And now you can see I'm instancing a bunch of particles every second, duplicating the same thing, creating an instance on every frame in different locations. I, I'm just using a smaller seed. Uh, let's say if I wanted many, I could just add maybe plus two and uh, then I, I would have more. So now if I simulate this, you can see we have now a lot of instances uh, that are falling down and are breaking at the same time. Perfect. You can see that after when they hit the, the table or the ground, they collapse and the strength is also adjustable. Uh, if I want to, I can go back to the constraint setup that I have increase the strength of the constraints procedurally and uh, then everything will be will be updated so these will be it will be harder to break these balls uh, so i can even make them stronger uh, so that they don't break at all uh, so if i increase uh, this strength re really high uh, it becomes very hard for them to break maybe they're still low maybe bring them again if you're a Patreon or a YouTube member, I'll be having this project file on Patreon or, or even Gumroad uh, for you to check out if you want to just examine the project and you don't want to go through the section of the course. But uh, yeah, we config the RBD to set up the different properties of uh, each instance like density and other things. And then you set up uh, the RBD here. So you can see that I've also increased the velocity. Let me just increase it even further. Maybe let's do uh, 60, negative 60 to push these balls down so i can play again you can see now but how much strength these are getting i'm also working on a section for rendering for rendering this out to get the same results that i have uh, so fitting up materials and uh, lighting i'm going to be using Kama for this so you just have to change to this solaris go to this stage here to start bringing in everything and i can show you how i uh, did that really quickly. This is the setup you need for the for the rendering. So Houdini has its own space for rendering. For staging things, you don't usually render where you make your objects. For example, in Blender, this 3D space is where we do everything, modeling, setting up, and everything. Uh, so in Houdini, it would be like creating a new uh, scene setup, a totally new scene setup, and just importing in the different objects you had from the previous scene. This is what this Solaris stage setup is. So I'm importing in uh, the balls here with uh, the animation and everything. I also have this grid uh, that I import in and then I import in the table, put them together with a merge uh, so that I can have everything. And now I also set up a material library. So in Houdini, you don't just select an object and create the materials like in Blender. Uh, they, all the materials have to live in a material library. So I can go inside there. You can see I have my glass, I have my wood and other stuff that I use. It's very simple to use. Uh, so for example, the wood, if I enter that, the setup is basically the same setup we use in Blender. You have your main shader, the surface shader. It has the same input as the principal shader. You have the base, you have uh, inputs for the base, a specular, which would also include the roughness, uh, clear coat, transmission, and other things. So to set up, to make sure the glass is uh, transparent, I use, you just increase the transmission value, uh, which should be up here. So you set it to one, but uh, we are in the wood material, which is, I think, the plane. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you set up that material, you set up the material for the wood, you set up the material for the, for the table, which is the brushed metal and then uh, the glass and you are good. Uh, assigning the materials is just, is very simple. You can just drag onto the object. This assigned material node will be created and uh, the objects will be assigned the material. You set up the lighting and you can see how Houdini works. It's all set up in, in nodes. So it's following this stream. So if I want to add any lights, it has, to, those lights have to be in this stream. And in fact, I can switch to the Kama render engine right here and you can see what this looks like we still have this node as the active node and that's why you see we don't have any of the materials or the lighting showing uh, so let's go activate our material library and then our material assignment uh, so that we can start seeing the materials uh, that we are assigned you can see the glass you can see the table 
and you can see the concrete now you can set up the lights uh this one uh, was disabled it's just a dome a light basically the the equivalent to a sky light in blender uh and you can see how that looks like you can even add in a sky texture if you want so for example i can go to my hdr eyes and pick a texture uh, like uh, this and you can see i'm using it now uh, for the lighting of uh, this scene but uh, it was too much for me so i just disabled that and uh, used one area light i also disabled all the other lights set up my camera now i can go to the camera and view this through my scene uh, the camera is just rotating or orbiting the, the scene and that's it everything else is just setting up the render material materials and then exporting the image sequence to get what you see in the end here and that's it yeah so if you want to add houdini to your own workflow uh, join me in and others in this course this is just the latest section i've added to the course more sections will be added as you know houdini has a lot of features can do quite a lot so i'll be constantly updating it in the same way that i've been updating the geometry nodes course and uh, all other future courses that i'll be creating so anyway Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. If you want to check out the course, all links are in the description.